and Slush is going to have to back off or else he's going to lose all these forces. The Phoenix much faster than the Hydralis off creep, so Kiwikaki could be doing some harassment. Looks like he's waiting for another two Phoenix, up to eight total. As we see, these Phoenix, uh, a few kills on each. And now going to be able to bounce around all three bases. So Slush maybe think, he, think he's doing the right thing, trying to get his economy up and going with three bases. But if anything, it just makes him more susceptible to this Phoenix harass. The Phoenix are going to be able to bounce around to all these bases, taking down multiple drones all at once. With this many Phoenix, they're going to have unlimited energy for the most part, able to take down those drones as soon as they uh, get lifted. So we do see a spore crawler coming out for slush. So good reaction there. If he can get up enough spore crawlers around these bases, it looks like two coming up in the main and in the first natural, or in the first uh, expansion. Phoenix, for their part, coming in and continue this drone harassment. Just the 25 harvesters on three bases, so not able to make any sort of headway into establishing an economic game. We do see Kiwikaki throwing down a third expansion, so just pressing his advantage here. If we look at the army tab, Slush actually has the larger army with these Hydralis. Kiwikaki just mostly focusing on his economy and these uh, these Phoenix and with the harassment. He is working on a Colossus along with the extended Thermal Lance, so that's going to be very powerful against these Hydralisks. He was able to react to the Hydralisks because he's just so comfortable right now. Slush is not able to push his front door with these Photon Cannons there and Kiwikaki just massing up these units, Colossus, Void Rays, and at the same time doing damage with these Phoenix to the economy of Slush. So Slush is in a pickle here. He's going to have to come out with some sort of hero play or some sort of unit counter to the, uh, to the uh, Colossi of Kiwikaki. Perhaps get up some air of his own, maybe some Corruptors to try to take on those uh, Phoenix. Phoenix not powerful against those Corruptors, as the Corruptors do have the 2 armor. Phoenix not doing much damage at all. Only the 5 damage to, uh, to air if they're not light. So all in all, just going to be 6 damage to those Corruptors from the Phoenix. So you might want to see Slush go that way. I'm not sure he can spare the gas. The one good thing about Hydras and Roaches is they're a little bit light on gas, and he just does not have enough drones to be on gas right now. But he's going to have to do something to take on the... Uh, these cannons, the Colossi, and the Phoenix of Kiwikaki. Kiwikaki getting this third base saturated. If you look at the economy, 61 harvesters to 39 now. So Slush has been droning up best he can. Looks like he's now working on a Nidus Worm. Not really sure what he's going to do with that. If you could get a Overlord back here, he could Nidus into the base of Kiwikaki. Hope to do some economic damage. Looks like the Nida is going to come at this top part instead, so he's going to be able to take on this third expansion, bypass these photon cannons, and try to micro behind these minerals, take out as many of the probes as he can. For their part, these Phoenix are retreating back to the main. It looks like Slush has done a great job spreading this creep a little bit late, but before he's going to be able to push out with those Hydras and Roaches, he's going to have to get that creep down. So these roaches in perfect position, nothing Kiwikaki can do as his army is stuck in his main. He's not going to be able to react fast enough, and Slush just able to take down that nexus. It looks like Kiwikaki did pull off a number of probes, so he does save those probes. Now, not really sure what Slush can do. It looks like he is going to burrow that one roach, so he's going to try to deny any sort of uh, nexus if it does try to be warped in again. Looks like that roach can be seen by that photon cannon. Again, the photon cannon can see farther than it can shoot. That's the same for spore crawlers as well as turrets. So that detector going to do its job, take out that one roach, and Kiwikaki going to throw up that third expansion again. See, Slush is going to lose this Nidus Worm. Fortunately, his roaches are going to be safe as they are in that void of nothingness between the Nidus Worms like to think maybe they're underneath the map here. So you see Slush just trying to uh, get up an infestation pit as well as a spire. He's on every single lair tech right now, so not really sure what he's going to focus on. Looks like he's getting out another evolution chamber, so he's sort of transitioning into a late game build, but I don't think his economy is very strong. Just the 51 harvesters on these three bases Looks like he's just on the 4 gas right now as well. His income only, uh, well, it actually is up to 1,500. 
I almost misread that and thought he was the 700. It looks like Kiwi Kaki's mostly main, mostly mined out of his main. He's got had good saturation on this natural here, and he's just waiting for this nexus to pop up. So his economy will get up and running again once this nexus pops, and these drones, which had been long distance mining, get back. So we do see it looks like Kiwi Kaki is going to push out. He does have an observer, and he did take out a number of those uh, creep colonies. Looks like he's going to do a force field here, try to keep the army of slush in that main while he takes down this Nidus network and this hatchery. That was a good job taking down the Nidus network. You never know how many units are going to pop out there and could take on this army. So now we're going to see slush, instead of pushing out here, is going to retreat. He's going to give up this base here. These drones are going to burrow, but with the detector of Kiwikaki, he's going to be able to take out all these drones. Got to watch this uh, spore crawler as it can target the Colossi and the Void right here. Looks like he's going to take that win, and now he's going to engage these Zerg units. The Zerg units are not in a good concave yet. A great force field. They're going to try to push back these Roaches and the, the Hydralis and Slush just GG's right there. He did finally have up some Corruptors to take on those Colossi and the Phoenix, but it was just a little late. He lost all of his Hydralis and his Roaches to these great force fields and just the sheer number of Colossi that uh, Kiwi Kaki has eight right now. Nothing the Zerg player can do. He was so far behind, losing that hatchery or having to cancel it, and then all that Phoenix harass on those workers. At one point, he had three bases up and only the 24 drones, so nothing he could do. Kiwi Kaki wins the series in just four games. So I didn't know this was a four-game series going into this, but I just thought the play of Kiwi Kaki was so great in every game that it really warranted showing uh, and casting these games. The jungle basin play with the pylon positioning was awesome. A good macro game in the second game. Some great control in that third game, uh, defending against that cheese. And then right here with those Phoenix, just owning his opponent economically and then pushing in late with the fast superior army. So great showing by Kiwi Kaki. He remains the king of the hill in the Gosu Cup king of the hill uh, matchup. And we'll see if somebody is able to take him on next week and knock him off. So thanks for watching the series. If you enjoyed this cast or any of my other casts, check out some of my other games. I have some great ones up from BlizzCon, from MLG, from IAM, as well as a few of my own games. If you really enjoy them, comment, tell me how I'm doing, what you thought of the players play, maybe throw a subscription my way, and make sure you check out my games in the future. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.